Hey guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today's video is a Solar Hunter build, and this is basically my go-to solo build for this season, and it's something that I've used to solo Flawless the new dungeon, as well as do stuff like solo GMs and even some solo raid encounters. Some brief highlights of the build include having constant Radiant and Restoration effects for great survivability, repairing this with instant healing and invisibility through Assassin's Cow, as well as having some decent weapon support, and enabling this build a lot of different playstyles depending on how you want to take it. This is something that you can fit out for boss DPS, as well as just general gameplay and higher levels of content. It is one of my favorite builds on Hunter, and I want to showcase this build to you guys in case you want to try some of your own solo content. Before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe for more Test 2 content just like this. And let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the build today. I'm also working on a solo Titan and solo Warlock build, so stay tuned for those in the near future. Getting right into the subclass then. For your super, it's really up to you for whichever one you want to use. I personally like using Golden Gun Marksman in case I'm able to do a hot swap to Celestial Nighthawk for more super damage, but even without it, Marksman is my go-to choice for just better single target damage. With that said though, it is really your choice of super, whichever you prefer to use. For your abilities though, we're going to use Gambler's Dodge. The main reason behind this is it allows us to have an instant way to get back our full melee charge in case we ever need to, as the main function of this build revolves around using your melees to proc Assassin's Cal and its invis effects, as well as keep up your radiant and restoration effects. Onto the melee charge itself, I'm personally going with Knife Trick as I believe it's the easiest to use and also will slightly scorch targets on hit, which we can have some additional benefits from. Now, I would mainly use this up to and including master level content. Beyond that, with stuff like Grandmaster Nightfalls, I would swap over to a weighted throwing knife just because this is going to have a bit more damage and will reliably kill minor enemies a lot more often than the regular knife trick in higher end content. And then finally, onto the grenade, I'm personally going with a healing grenade just because this is a more solo focused build and having a healing grenade as a quick burst option is really, really useful. In addition, I'm also using a healing grenade to proc restoration and then our other abilities and fragments to keep restoration active all the time. With that said though, you can use any solar grenade that you would want to with this build. I'm personally not just because I don't see a lot of value coming from regular solar grenades as there's no enhancements that Solar Hunter can really have intrinsically for them. And so I believe healing grenade is best, but with that said, you can use any variation. Onto the aspects, the first one is knock them down, which in short, your solar super is enhanced in some way. Golden Gun Deadshot has increased damage resistance, Marksman Golden Gun has increased duration, and Blade Rush launches more projectiles, which means it does more damage. And while you're radiant, any final blows with your melee are instantly refunded, and this is what allows us to chain our throwing knives infinitely. And again, in case we ever lose that chain, whether we miss our throwing knife, or if we just don't kill the ad in one shot with our throwing knife, that's what our dodge is for, which instantly allows us to get our entire melee charge back. Final aspect is on your mark, which anytime you get a precision final blow, you and nearby allies get an increase to your weapon handling and reload speed. Now on your mark is mainly being used because of its three fragment slots. So with that said, if you would want to take this build in a slightly different direction and pair Gunpowder Gamble at the cost of an additional fragment slot, you can do that as well. I personally just like using the five fragments I have down below, but again, keep that in mind. If you wanted to customize this build slightly to fit your own version of this play style, you can swap out on your mark for a much more offensive based gunpowder gamble. Finally then, onto the fragments. The first one is Ember of Torches, which anytime you get a powered melee attack against a combatant, it makes you and nearby allies radiant. This is how we're actually gonna proc the radiant effect through knock them down, which allows us to have an infinite chaining melee charge. Now, while you can get radiant from the seasonal artifact, I do want to point out that the radiant effect provided from Emperor Torches is just much more convenient, and especially in a solo playstyle, having to worry about getting solar multi kills with a weapon or getting multiple precision hits with a solar weapon can be kind of tedious, especially in higher difficulty content where you're trying to focus a lot more on survivability. And so having an instant radiant option through your melee that you can infinitely chain and instantly regen with your dodge is much more reliable for stuff like super damage or just weapon damage, anti-champion capabilities like barrier champions. It's just way more convenient in my opinion. The next fragment is Ember of Solace, which will increase the base duration of radiant and restoration. This is mainly for use with our healing grenade as it gives us a few more seconds at base to get a few solar kills and to keep restoration's effect active. The next fragment is Ember of Empyrean, and no matter which way you take this build, this is something that I believe is mandatory on basically any solar build out there. In short, getting solar weapon final blows or solar ability final blows will extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant. The next fragment is Ember of Char, which allows our solar ignitions to spread Scorch stacks to other targets. By combining Ember of Char with something like Rays of Precision, we can generate a ton of ignitions and also generate a ton of scorching effects on multiple enemies, which when paired with Ember of Singeing allows us to get our class ability back incredibly quickly. 
because with Ember of Singeing, anytime that we scorch a target, our class ability regens a lot faster. Because of how fast we can get our class ability back with Ember of Singeing, we really don't need to invest in our mobility at all with this build, and as a result, we can invest in other stats that I would believe are more important, stuff like Resilience or Discipline, for example. Moving on to the Seasonal Artifact and going over my recommendations for required mods, the first one is going to be Solo Operative, and this is something I think is required on any solo build currently in the season mainly because this is a 15% damage boost from all sources when playing solo. That includes gun damage, ability damage, super damage, everything is boosted by 15%. So if you're looking to use this build in something like a solo GM or a solo dungeon run, for example, solo operative is mandatory. I'm also pairing it with Torch, which while you're Radiant, you deal 5% increased weapon damage to any enemy affected by Strand or Stasis debuffs. This is mainly applicable in case you want to use a weapon that can actually apply these Strand or Stasis debuffs. And by the way, if you wanted to, something like Unraveling Orbs is a great way to make any Strand weapon an Unraveling weapon, applying that debuff for you and therefore increasing your weapon damage. I'd also recommend using Flint Striker, which anytime you get Rapid Solar Weapon defeats or Precision hits, it'll grant you Radiant. This is the alternative to Ember of Torches that I mentioned earlier and allows us to have a brand new way to get Radiant, and like I said earlier with stuff like Ember of Empyrean, we can keep Radiance Effect active at all times once we have it. But with that said, you can use Flint Striker in tandem with Ember of Torches like I do, it's just another way to proc the effect without getting a kill or wasting your melee charge. In addition, I'm also pairing it with Revitalizing Blast, which anytime you cause damage with a solar ability, it'll weaken champions and bosses. This is mainly with our melee charge that we can instantly refund through our dodge. And again, this is a 15% debuff, so it's very, very crucial for stuff like boss damage. We're also pairing this with Rays of Precision, which while we're Radiant, any solar precision final blows will cause a combatant to ignite. And again, these ignitions can also spread Scorch stacks to other targets, damaging them and heavily regening our class ability. Another thing to note with Rays of Precision is while you're Radiant, these solar precision blows aren't just weapon final blows, these can also be ability final blows. Specifically for Hunter with Throwing Knives, you can actually get precision kills with your Throwing Knife and have an ignition spawn from that. Finally, moving on to the armor and the mods for today, Starting off on our exotic and our helmet for today is Assassin's Cow. In short, getting a melee kill or a finisher against a minor enemy will provide you with 7 seconds of invisibility and around 100 HP or half your total health. Now the instant healing and invisibility provided by Assassin's Cow will scale up the higher tier enemy that you actually defeat with a finisher or a melee. For example, elite enemies will provide 10 seconds of healing and around 200 HP, and this can even increase up to bosses and champion type enemies where you'll get around 13 seconds of invisibility and all of your health back when performing a melee final blow or a finisher on them. Assassin's Cal is what I consider to be the best neutral exotic currently on Hunter, and the main reason is because invisibility is such a strong effect. The instant healing is really, really nice and works great with Restoration's effect in the background, but invisibility for around 7 seconds is more than enough time to reload all your weapons, move to a new position, or just coordinate your next attack once you come out of invisibility. It's one of the strongest effects in PvE and is what makes Assassin's Cal such a great exotic. When paired with the offensive capabilities of Solar Hunter, it provides it the necessary survivability as well as utility that it really needs to shine in game content. As far as the mods go, I'm personally using a stack of Heavy Ammo Finder and Special Ammo Finder. This is mainly for stuff like dungeon content or stuff like Grandmaster Nightfalls, where ammo consumption is a very big deal, especially while playing solo. And this allows us to get slightly more heavy and special ammo drops to support our weapons as we go through them. I'm also pairing it with a Harmonic Siphon mod, which allows Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows to create an orb of power. If you would want though, alternative mods include stuff like Hands-On, allowing us to get bonus super energy on melee kills, or additional Siphon mods depending on whatever weapons you want to rock with this build, as you can rock a variety of weapons depending on the activity and scenario you're taking this build into, and I will be going over some alternatives at the end of the video. Next up onto our gauntlets, I'm using two stacks of Heavy Handed, which will allow us to generate an orb of power on our throwing knife kill every 5 seconds. These orbs of power are going to grant us super energy whenever we pick them up, as well as activate our armor charge effects, but depending on which way you want to take this build, these can also link to other orbs of power mods that can increase your survivability, ability regen, and a bunch of other effects. But I'm also pairing this with a stack of impact induction, which when we cause damage with our melee attack, it'll reduce our grenade cooldown. This allows us to regen our grenade very, very quickly while contributing to the main gameplay loop of this build. Onto the chest piece, the mods I'm using are really dependent on the activity. I personally like to go with two damage resist mods that are specific to the activity I'm in, as well as a reserve mod depending on the heavy or special weapon I'm focusing on pairing with this build. Again, if you want to use a strand weapon, stasis, void, arc, kinetic, whatever, swap the reserve out to complement that. But if you wanted to, you could also use three reserve mods and max out the reserve ammo you have for a specific kind of weapon, as well as using three resist mods to maximize your survivability, especially in stuff like higher difficulty content. Next up onto our legs, I'm personally rocking three solar weapon surge stacks that enables us to have a 22% damage boost to our solar weapons when we have a stack of armor charge. 
This is entirely dependent on the weapon support you want to use with this build. Much like the Harmonic Reserve and the Harmonic Siphon mod, you're going to want to swap these searches out depending on the weapon that you primarily want to focus on. I mainly like using Solar because it also builds into Ember of Empyrean and allows us to have our Restoration and Radiant effects kept up as we get kills with Solar weapons. However, if you don't want to rock three Solar Surge mods or just want to swap out mods for something more survivability focused, you can also use stuff like Recuperation, which will grant you health every time you pick up an Orb of Power, which works great in tandem with stuff like Assassin's Cal and Heavy Handed, as not only are you going to get some health back every time you get that melee kill, but picking up the resulting Orb of Power from that melee kill will then give you additional health. In addition, you could use something like Better Already, which is going to allow you to have instant health regen when you pick up an Orb Power, and actually would fit well with Assassin's Cow because Assassin's Cow only gives a chunk of HP back but doesn't start your health regen. This would allow you to pick up the Orb of Power resulting from that melee kill, and again, this is while you're invisible thanks to Assassin's Cow, and start regening the rest of that health remaining. Finally, onto the cloak, the first one I recommend is Powerful Attraction, which will automatically pick up any nearby orbs of power when you use your class ability. And again, if you wanted to use something like Recuperation or Better Already, this will work perfectly with your orb pickup effects from a distance. I'm also using Time Dilation, which allows our Armor Charge Decay effects to have a longer duration. For our build, it'll allow our Solar Weapon Search duration to go from 10 seconds per Armor Charge stack to 15 seconds. And effectively, it lets us have that boosting effect for longer periods of time without needing to pick up orbs of power to keep that effect going. I'm also pairing this with Distribution just to help mainly with our grenade and class ability regen when we use our dodge ability, and this just allows us to have a universal ability regen effect when we use that class ability. Before we move on to the weapons, I quickly want to mention that you're going to want to build your weapon loadout depending upon the activity that you're doing. For example, is an encounter or activity that you're in time gated some way or has some mechanic that requires you to put out a bunch of damage very, very quickly in order to progress through the activity? Or is it stuff like Warlord's Ruin, where there's really no major time gate behind doing an encounter at a certain speed, and thus you can focus on the total damage output of a weapon loadout rather than having a ton of damage very, very quickly. Another good example is stuff like a solo GM run, where you're probably not going to want to commit to using two special weapons and a heavy weapon, and might even use two primary weapons in order to have not only reliable champion staggers from a distance, but also have efficient ammo use, meaning that you never run out of ammo on an important weapon. With all that said, let's go over some general recommendations for different activities. Starting off, solar weapons are a must have with this build. Solar weapons pair greatly with your solar abilities and stuff like Ember of Empyrean and allow you to have your restoration and radiant effects kept up indefinitely. Some general solar weapons I'd recommend for this build are going to be stuff like Zalu's Bane, which is just one of the best solar primaries currently in the game, especially with this season and with the recent hand cannon buffs. But again, any solar weapon works great, so if you have a different primary solar weapon you like using or special solar weapons you like using, that works just fine too. Other exotics that are notable this season include stuff like Polaris Lance, which I'm sure you've been seeing everywhere, which is a great solar weapon all around as it provides a lot of raw utility from its consistent ignition effects. As far as special and heavy weapons go, it's mainly dependent upon what you're trying to achieve with this build and the activity that you're in. For example, if you want to go with a high DPS build, you could always use something like Izanagi's Burden and combine that with Apex Predator and then fit in a solar weapon like Salu's Bane or Astro's Dejection in order to have a reliable solar weapon that can not only trigger your subclass effects, but also fit in well with the DPS rotation. Some other alternatives include any strand or stasis weapon that can apply a strand or stasis debuff. This will allow us to take advantage of Torch's 5% weapon damage bonus. And again, it's for all weapons while we're Radiant. So as long as they have some kind of stasis or strand debuff on them, you get an additional 5% damage boost on top of the 15% damage boost provided by Solo Operative. Finally, focusing on the heavy weapon. The thing to note is that you can really use whatever you want in this slot and have success with it. So let's go over what I would consider to be my favorites. The first is going to be Dragon's Breath, specifically with its catalyst. Now from damage testing, Dragon's Breath is one of the best solo play weapons currently in the game as its total damage is some of the best out of any heavy weapon. Other solar exotic heavies to recommend are stuff like Galahorn, which is just a great rocket all around, or stuff like Parasite in case you want to build up to a super high damage grenade launcher, basically acting like a delete button after getting a number of kills. As far as solar legendaries go, I personally like using Apex Predator. You could use something like Bipod and Reconstruction and just focus on having a ton of rockets in the reserves. You can use Reconstruction and Bait and Switch and focusing on high damage. With that said though, make sure you adjust your elemental armor mods to best fit the weapon you're primarily focusing on. Again, I'm using solar focused armor mods in correspondence with my solar heavy weapon. On all guys, that's the build for today. Like I mentioned earlier, this has been my go-to solo build for Hunter, specifically when it comes to solo flawlessing dungeons, solo runs of stuff like GMs, even raid encounters, and depending upon which weapon loadout and combination you want to go with, can support you through a variety of different activities. 
Pairing the intrinsic healing and invisibility of Assassin's Cal with the high damage output and infinite melees of Solar Hunter is a match made in heaven and it creates one of the best builds for basically any level of content. If you're looking for a solo build for a dungeon clear, a solo flawless run, GM or even raid encounters, this is a build I would highly recommend you give a shot. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm also working on a solo Titan and solo Warlock build, so stay tuned for that in the near future. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the video, I greatly appreciate your support, and as always, have a great day.